Hey kids, happy Friday. Glad you guys are with me. Thanks for joining me here on a beach location. Again, most mornings are kind of cool, then it warms up during the day. I'm getting some good relaxation. Thank you so much. Many of you have said, hey, it's been a long seven or eight month stretch for you and Sarah, I hope you're getting some rest, praying for you. Thank you, your prayers are felt. I, I know for sure that God listens to prayers. And uh, so your prayers for us are awesome. That's why we encourage you to text prayer to that number on the screen. We wanna pray for you as well. Happy Friday, I definitely will encourage you to find a cinnamon roll today. I will find a cinnamon roll. The great thing about being on vacation like this is we spend a lot of time walking on this beach and walking, so getting lots of exercise, which gives you more excuse to eat. <laughs> what does Sarah and I do? Well, uh, most nights we just kind of say, hey, let's just make something simple here. Uh, but we like to date too. We like to go out and get dressed up and go on dates. We've been doing that for 38 years. So. Again, it's a good time, good time to get away. God bless you guys. I'm thinking of you today, praying for you. And today I want to continue this keen theme. I should have said this. We're going to be in Matthew uh, chapter 27, Matthew again, this third day in a row. And one of the reasons that Matthew is such a good place to go for the king talk is because Matthew, uh, he takes that theme all the way through the whole book. In fact, you might wonder why the why is the genealogy in the book of Matthew different from that in the book of uh, John and Luke? And the reason is, is because uh, he is taking the, um, the lineage of Jesus through the kings. His point is that Jesus is king, and Jesus has a kingdom. And so all through Matthew, you hear that language over and over again. And it doesn't stop when it comes to Jesus' death. I want to read a pretty good uh, length of uh, passage here. I'm going to st start with verse 20, um, 28 of chapter 27 of Matthew, Matthew 27, 28, and we'll go all the way through verse 43, all right? I want to make two points about a king for you today, and then uh, you can go into your Friday and have a good day. Here we go. Here's the word of the Lord, so it's going to be good. Uh, talking about the guys who are um, the Roman soldiers who are beating him. They stripped him, they put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed on his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, and they said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him off the ro uh, of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man from Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but he, when he tasted it, would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Now, they sat down and they kept watch over him there. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you're the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Three times Jesus is referred to as the King of the Jews. Once when he's being mocked by the Roman soldiers, they're making fun of him, actually dressing him in a mock uh, royal garb with a robe and a crown of thorns and a scepter as if he were the king, like the, like the, the emperor. And they, they say, hail king of the Jews in mock worship. And then, of course, the leaders, they see this sign over his head. Remember when people were crucified, they put the charge against him so that you would not mess with Rome. And so the charge against Jesus is he's the king of the Jews. That was Pilate's statement, probably in mockery. And then finally, the chief priest mocked Jesus, saying, hey, you're the king of the Jews. Now, I just want to make a point here. Two things Jesus could have done. He's already said in the garden to Peter, Peter, I could call legions of angels, and my father would come down and rescue me from these Roman soldiers. So I'm not under their control. So the Roman soldiers mocked. Jesus could have escaped them easily, militarily from heaven. And then the, um, the leaders tease him, if you're the king of the Jews, come down from the cross. And he does not come down from the cross, which would have been very tempting to do, just to shut those guys up making fun. Here's, here's what I want to tell you about our king. Our king could have 
overcome the Roman army and won. And our king could have come down from the cross and won. But if he did, you and I would have lost. He had to go through the cross to win. Which is better? Which is more powerful of a king? To be delivered from an army that's got him under arrest, to come down from a cross to prove people that are wrong, or to come out of the grave three days later. The king that we serve is one who is resurrected. On this Friday, live in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, your king, your Lord, my king, my God, king of kings, Lord of lords. That's who he is today. Remember that as you go through this day. God bless you guys. See you soon.